Let's play Willie's video. Willie's video. Will your raid spot be gone in TBC? I don't know. If you're a rogue, probably. Let's play. Ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Hi, Should Willie. you be worried about your raid spot? <clears throat> a lot of things change across the okay. dark portal. Class balance, raid size, raid composition, utility for the hybrid specs, and you shouldn't expect the same format that we see at the moment in raids to really carry across at all. Now I'm sure you've seen the changes going into the expansion, you might have seen class tier lists, <coughs> DPS rankings, yep. and who sits at the top or just rankings in general will change mm -hmm. from phase to phase in the expansion. And that is considering 2.43 class balance, the new gear that becomes available does switch things up. And I'm midway through the Is It Any Better Now series and we're still it's a really waiting good on the Hunter and Warlock vids, but yeah, I think everyone knows they're gonna be pretty good. What else changes then? Raid size? Think how many people you've seen come and go throughout Classic and how many of those are gonna come back? How many people do you think have been in your raid total? 60? 70? Over 100? Imagine that, that's a lot. Out of, out of the 40 people that we got server first Ragnaros with on Ferlina, I think like six of them still play. Six of them. Maybe at this point, maybe less than that. I checked last was like a couple months ago. Maybe some more people quit. Not many people, right? A lot of a very high turnover in classic. Karazhan being run at once. It chews you up. So should you have any real concern <laughs> that your raid spot may be gone? With 40 man raids, there's a lot of space to just bring along, well, whoever shows up on the night really, it's just such a huge number of people. Cutting that down to 25 means 15 people are already at risk or gonna be swapped out on the bench raid to raid. Or maybe they can get 10 more and form their own raid. That would mean five Karazhan groups though if we're looking at 50 people. And even if your guild runs two Lots. raids at the moment in classic, if it's all split up and people carry on, you're- You know the limiting factor for Karazhan groups? It's gonna be tanks, right? You know, hey, if you're if you're currently a Fury Warrior in TBC and you're worried about a raid spot going into TBC, don't worry. You can tank Karazhan split number 17. And then you can not be invited to the 25-man raids. You still have something to do. You're looking at three 25-man raids and eight 10-man raids. Imagine the loot council. It would be more like a loot senate. It would need that many people to keep track mm -hmm. of things. And then, oh no, I'm in Freddy's group tonight. I swear if he blames his cat for jumping on his keyboard on a random wipes us again. There's always going to be that group you don't want to be part oh of. God. So raid size is the first real change, but what matters more than that is what goes into the raid. You, the player, the class. And as we know by now, things change from classic to TBC in power level. Though there are always questions to be asked when you see projected DPS meters, but there's probably a bit of truth in there as well as to who should expect to be where. This is where the conversation turns to optimization and what is the ideal mm -hmm. raid comp, be it in 10 man or 25 man. And for classic, that's turned- let me, let me take a look here, actually. Is this a good comp? Prot, Affliction? Uh, so stuff for the Imp, Holy Priest, you have Resto for the tree form, buff for the tank. You don't have your Arms Warrior. You sh you need- you actually need to have Arms Warrior in this group, and also probably the Prot Paladin 2 should be in this group. Like, I would- I would probably take out the Aff Warlock and the Priest and put in Arms and Prot in this group. And then, this is a perfect group, 2BM Survival Feral Enhancement. Yep, that's perfect. Uh, Destro Destro Balance Elemental. Yes, true. Arcane, Arcane, Shadow, Holy Paladin, Resto. Uh, yeah. What I would do is probably... Boom, boom, bomb, boom, boom, bomb, bomb. Yeah, okay, so it'd be boom, boom, bomb, bomb, and then boom, bomb. And that's perfect. Man. And for classic, yep. that's turned out to be how many warriors yep. can I possibly fit in this one single raid mm -hmm. group because they just delete raids before any mechanics really happen. I think Perfect. the gap between what's available for your casual guild <laughs> and what speedrun guilds opt to take is going to be a lot closer <laughs> in TBC through the nature of wanting to bring a wide variety of utility specs along to the raid. And the fact that those classes will be in demand now. Your average raid comp for classic probably looks absolutely nothing like what speedruns do at the moment. And yet you've probably got through the content just fine. It'll take you a bit longer, yes. but hey, if the end boss of the raid goes down, then it's job done, right? And comparing optimizing your composition in classic to retail is kind of a bit of a silly thing to do. When you look at all- You know, I gotta say, like, 
I have, sincerely, I have more funds, uh, more funds. I have more fun in a three hour next Ramus run where it's like kind of Mimi and it's like kind of low key, like borderline shit show raid. I have more fun in that than I have uh, speed running actually. Speed running like, f like feeds the ego more, you know what I mean? But you know, like, you know, fuck the gamer ego. It's actually, it's more fun to have shit show raids. It actually is. And then dude, like we, I, I never had a speed run. When we were doing AQ40 and uh, BWL speedruns going fucking hard, I never had a run where I was like, fuck yeah, I'm so happy with this time. It was always like, ah, uh, like, yeah, it's, we shaved off three minutes, but uh, it's still, we could have done better. I never had like a satisfying run. And so it, it, it never like felt like a, it was, never felt like a victory. It was like, it was like a small victory, but more of a loss also kind of work the sims the multiple different alts gearing out different characters just in case you end up maybe needing them it doesn't really follow through for classic because unlike classic that level of preparation is kind of needed there and not just for world first guilds either the content is just really difficult on mythic there's less than 500 clears on the current raid tier and retail, which True. came out midway through November in 2020. Do we need that level of preparation and hardcore research for Classic then? Well, no, really, not at all. Well, unless you are a hardcore speedrunning guild in Classic. And that's the other interesting comparison to make. In retail, it's all about who can clear first. In Classic, we know there's going to be dozens of people clearing every single piece of raid content on day one, so the competition benchmark moves to speed instead, whereas nobody really cares about speed and retail whatsoever. We do have the content confirmed to be pre nerf with modifications, but we already know... I really do hope, and I don't think it'll be the case, but I can dream, right? I really hope TBC content is, like, just hard enough to disincentivize speedruns. So the focus is like, hey... Let's just kill this boss. And if we wipe, you know, it's okay. We'll get the boss next time. And the focus, you know, becomes more of that and less of, you know, blast, blast, zoom, 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 you know. I, I really kind of hope it's, it's hard enough to disincentivize that. So much when it comes to optimizing our character, it's still probably not going to be overly hard. Let I'll tell you this, though. You know we're going to be hosting on this channel here. We're going to be doing five-man heroic dungeon speedrun competitions. I'm going to form a whole league with brackets. So that's going to be badass, okay? We're going to be doing that here. To be real. So mm -hmm. we're all good then. Everyone's going to get a raid spot. Everyone will be happy and there'll be absolutely no problems whatsoever then. Well, there is this little problem actually. And that's not the raid size or even the class balance. It's the class distribution at the moment. Which if we look at Ironforge.pro, which for once tells us the exact subset of players we want to look Warriors at, that being mage. the raiding population, that a lot of people are playing the classes that do the most damage, that perform the best, which is of course to be expected. You know how shameless this is? In early Classic WoW, when mages were doing much- Okay, so in like, in phase one of Classic, mages were the- Okay, how can I put this? How can I put this? When no one had good gear, it's like early phase one. The game has been out for only a couple months. No one's in, in full phase one bis and whatever, whatever. Mages were one of the... Mages were like right up there with warriors because mages did really, really well without gear. Like if, if you take a naked warrior and a naked mage, a mage will do more, if that makes sense. Like mages are really good when you have shit gear. So in phase one, mages were really, really good. And so you saw a lot of mages. Like actually on a lot of servers on Ferlina, for example, there were more mages than warriors that were raiding. And then time goes on, it's late phase one, people get better gear, it's phase two, it's phase three, people rerolled warrior. It's like crazy how many flavor of the month gamers there are, they're like, oh wow, warriors are getting better. All right, reroll time, time to reroll, you know, absolutely shameless. But the amount of people playing these classes is a lot, like a whole lot. In fact, I'll tell you, like I knew this was going to happen, I knew mages were really fast levelers and very strong in world PvP. So in early classic, when we're talking about going for server first Ragnaros, uh, you, you'll go back and check our, our, our VOD of it. We have like 10 mages. I was telling everyone that are like, hey, stay safe. What class should I play? I was like, hey, play a mage. Play a mage. You level fast. We're going for server first. They're really good in early in early uh, tier one when everyone has shitty gear. And for world PvP events in early phase one, like Unguro Crater, Devil Sword Mafia, whatever, 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 Gurubashi Arena, it's mages. Mages, mages, mages. So we had a fuck ton of mages in power early because I was telling them, hey, play mage. And then a lot of those mages uh, just ended up rerolling warrior once mages kind of like fell off a little bit. So, But dude, in phase one, early phase one of classic mages, fucking 
own they rinse out. Look at how many passes there are for Fury Warriors compared to Shadow Priests or Rep Hallers or Enhancement. In fact, this class distribution is a bit like a copy-paste of who goes where on meters, minus mages because of the whole Ignite building, and Paladin Shamans because factions, and Feral Druids because of- Look at that, Warlocks are third. In the next Aramis Warlocks are there, and then Hunters. Elemental Shaman, Feral Druid. Oh no. <laughs> Dude, warriors are topping at like three times more. It's insane. So, so yes, Red Paladin is 15 to 30 here. Warrior is like 42 to 66 or so. Uh, no, 7 to 71. Or so. Oh my god, dude. The tank. But apart from that, it's more or less in order of who goes where when it comes to damage. On nearly every single insane, server, insane. as shown on Ironforge.pro, <clears throat> the top three classes are Warrior, Mage. Is this balanced? Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no, man. Rogue. With the top two <laughs> classes often making up around 35% of the raiding population out of a current choice of eight classes per faction per server. Would you say a third of your raiding team is two classes between Warrior, Mage, Rogue at the moment? I bet it yeah. will be. Go and check. For my guild at the moment, Warrior Mage is nearly half the raid. That's about 20 people. Nearly a full raid for TBC. Yeah. And there's a reason your raid isn't filled with 10 Rep Paladins or Enhancement Shamans at the moment. And that isn't going to change with TBC. Warrior Mage Rogue at the moment are just, well, really good. People like playing the good classes, people like doing a lot of damage. And even if you raid for more fun or casually, the goal is still to clear the content, right? And if you manage to clear a raid with 10 Rep Paladins, you're more clearing despite the class, not because of it. The same isn't true for Fury Warriors. And in TBC, a lot of classes move from raw performance to more utility because Blizzard clearly wanted a lot more representation for some of the more downtrodden classes yeah, that's or good. the classes that have been pushed or pigeonholed into healing. Now, Warriors don't drop to where Retributions are in the moment in terms of damage. You're far from it, actually. This raid. You, you, know, you know how, like, AQ40 kind of killed Classic a little bit? Where just people hated AQ40 and a lot of people quit and, like, Phase 5 wasn't really that popular? This phase, whatever, what it's going to be phase three of TBC, which is Black Temple and High Jaw. Dude, it's so weird because Black Temple is sick. Like, Black Temple is fucking badass, and then High Jaw is uh, so shitty. So, you're going to have your raid night. You go clear Black Temple, and then it's like, all right, guys, good job killing Illidan. Let's go to High Jaw now. Uh, God, High Jaw fucking sucks dick. <sighs> But you kind of do want a lot of the different <laughs> specs in your raid now for utility. Oh. And it's kind of similar to Classic. You have our classes that do damage, and then the classes that make the classes that do damage do more damage, if that makes sense. Oh, and Tier 4 and 5, just in general, are full of fights which are just not favourable for melee whatsoever. The top performers we see in Classic will not be the same over in TBC, and they appear to be- High Jaw's boring. Well, I used to like- so I was raiding Black Temple and High Jaw. I was like probably 12 or 13. This is back in actual TBC. Black Temple is the raid where I would do my homework. Like, so I'd be up late at night, AFKing trash packs in Mount High Jaw, doing my fucking math homework. That like That's how boring this fucking raid was. Even 12 year olds stay safe. Like I would literally, I, this, is what, this is the dynamic. Even me at 12 years old, I'd rather do fucking algebra than do High Jaw. That was actually how bad it was. It's terrible. Way overrepresented as a proportion of the raiding population at the moment. Hate it. So then, should you be worried about your raid spot? Well, probably not, unless everybody <laughs> decides they want to stay with the same class as they do at the moment, which I don't think will happen. I think people are jumping at the opportunity to play a hybrid DPS and actually be wanted and in demand. Unless you are in a really hardcore speedrun guild, in which case, yeah, you probably want to think about re-rolling if you don't already have your raid spot secured, but you didn't even need to tell you that, did you? I think one of the biggest changes will be the actual raid size downgrading and- So your guild carried you as a kid, sounds right? Dude, I don't know if it was just my guild. It, it, maybe it was, but like, my guild was fucking brain dead. Like, we, we had people that would AFK on trash packs because they thought it was going to lower their entire recount parse for the entire raid. So, like, they would never reset recount. They'd have recount for the entire raid. I, rem I remember being in SSC, and there was a fucking warrior. And he's like, yeah, I don't DPS trash because the trash brings down my DPS, and I want my DPS to be as high as it possibly can be for the entire duration of the SSC run. So, we, he, like, he would show up and do bosses, and then he would AFK on fucking trash. I don't know if I just had fucking brain-dead dumbasses in my guild specifically, 
or and by the way this was a guild like we killed elden like we were we were the, we were the best guild on our server okay just fyi and uh like that's how we fucking did it so that's fucking chat yeah um it was just a different time okay the year was 2007 the internet was young it was a different era okay and how many raid teams guilds at the moment will run <laughs> or whether we're just going to see an absolutely enormous amount of new guilds pop up out of nowhere to take all those players who are being moved about on the bench or just can't find a spot in their main raid you kick those losers yeah or you give them double war glaives which is what we did anymore and i think with things like the quote-unquote new classes coming into the game for both factions as well as the pre-patch leveling period and just the boost Dude, in general it's going to get a lot of people off the current classes which are overrepresented <laughs> and pretty much onto the next flavor of the expansion which is one of the benefits or downsides of classic i guess it's very strange for an mmo to never be rebalanced and for everyone to know in advance what will be the best for basically the whole game there we go then i just wanted to go over that really quickly i think there's quite a lot of negativity around certain classes and people are expecting them to just go from amazing to completely useless they'll still be used it's just how many people will want to play that and will they yeah exactly like here's the thing can i can i find his like dps breakdown where was that in the video uh where he showed all of the next ramus dps rankings uh yeah here it is wait no no that's not it this is it okay so i think a lot of people think going into tbc pretend this is tbc where it's like warlocks are at the top and hunters are up there right and then they think like, oh, I'm a warrior, I'm a rogue, I'm going to be down here. There's no class that is down here, right? It's like, imagine, uh, wait, 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 let me open up paint. I'll, sh I'll show you the actual like discrepancy here, okay? So this is like warlock, right? You have, you have like hunter up here too. And then people are like, oh man, like I'm a warrior. I'm going to be down here, right? Way behind. No, no, no. Like warrior is like here. And rogue, rogue is like here. So it's not like, yeah, you're right. You're not insanely overpowered anymore. True. Does it mean you're completely fucking dog shit trash? No. You're fine. You're fine. Whereas Rat. Anyway, let's 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 uh, let's finish this video. The whole game. Finish this video. There we go. Then I just wanted to go over that really quickly. I think there's quite a lot of negativity around certain classes, <laughs> and people are expecting them to just go from amazing to completely useless. They'll still be used, it's just how many people will want to play that, and will there be enough people actually looking for that class to- Well, I'll tell you, like, because of Classic, there are so many people that play Warrior. It's like, are are all of these people gonna reroll to something better? Or are guilds and TBC just kinda have to deal with the fact that they're gonna have, like, three Warriors on the raid roster? I think most guilds are just gonna say, yeah, like, like, ultimately you have to take the players you have. Not every guild can have a perfect five Shaman, four Warlock, you know, three hunter perfect roster. There's gonna be guilds just because there's gonna be so many warriors and mages. A lot of guilds are gonna have three warriors and three mages. Just, just in a similar way that not not every guild in classic right now has a perfect roster with twenty two warriors and two mages and one warlock and like not every ro not, today not even today every guild has every roster. Like my guild has five warlocks. Is that meta? No, we have like four hunters. Is that meta? No. But you, t you take what you have, and it, it depends on your guild's priorities, right? So yes, there will be guilds with three warriors, four warriors, three mages, two warlocks. It's gonna happen, just depends on who you have available. Everyone's like, oh yeah, we're gonna have five shamans, one shaman in each group. By the way, on the alliance, it's hard to have five shamans. Shamans are a hot commodity, okay? There's gonna be a lot of guild poaching of guilds trying to steal shamans from each other. There's not enough shamans to go around. So it's like, oh, the raid is in seven minutes, by the way. Um... Not every guild is going to have five shamans. Some guilds might only have two or three shamans. Five on the Alliance, especially Horde, it's a little bit different story, but on the Alliance, it, the shamans are, are, hard, are hard to get. Hard to get. Let me finish, let me, let me finish this real quick. I think for the vast majority of people, you'll be just fine when it comes to getting a spot in a raid. That's it then. Let me know what you think, if anything. And mm -hmm. as always, thank you so much for watching and listening in. And I'll see you on the next I love one TBC. very soon. Hot take. I'm excited for TBC. All right, here's Willie's video. That nah, was a good video. It's like, uh, is it a copium video? No, kind of. But it's true. He's he's uh, making people feel better. Just because you're a warrior or a rogue doesn't mean you have no raid spot. True.